Welcome to the School of Public Policy Commencement Exercises for Winter 2021. I'm Robert Orr, Dean of the School, and it is my great privilege to celebrate this milestone with you, your family, and your friends. A special shout out and thank you to Joy and her family for sharing this beautiful lay from Hawaii with me to celebrate this occasion with all of you. Dear graduates, like you, I was really looking forward to our first in-person commencement in two years. While I'm sorry that we are not sitting together in the Clarice Performing Arts Center right now, we are walking the walk of good policymakers and doing this ceremony online, respecting the real threat the virus poses to us and our loved ones. Though we are thus being good policymakers, I hope you all feel the genuine pride and warmth behind this celebration of you and your accomplishments. Today is December 21st, the shortest and darkest day of the year. I, for one, am a huge fan of celebrating the winter solstice, and not just because you graduates have made it to the finish line for your degrees. I like to mark the changing of the seasons and the reminder of the cosmos out there. More than anything, I love that every day for the next six months will be longer and lighter than the previous one, and that the trend will ineluctably be towards warming. I think you see where I'm going with this metaphor, graduates. You have struggled, persevered, and completed your degrees under the most stressful and challenging circumstances. As dark as the days are, as we struggle with the latest surge of the pandemic and the legion social, economic, and political problems of our country and our world right now, you are setting out on a journey which promises more light more warmth and more wisdom as we move forward. Your progression as a graduate, however, will not be cyclical like the seasons, but rather will be determined by the strength of your education, your resilience and your determination. It is up, up, up from here for you graduates. I am so proud of you. It is a privilege to be the dean of a school whose graduates have already impacted the challenges we face for the better. You have helped each other weather the pandemic. You have served your community's many needs. You have pushed back hard against racial injustice and inequity in its many forms. You have fought to protect, protect democracy in this country. And yet our world will need even more from you. I know you are prepared. Go forth with the knowledge that your SPP family stands squarely behind you as you go out to do good and make a difference in the world. Thank you, Mark, for sharing your wisdom with our graduates today. You are an example of everything we hope for and from our students. If there is one piece of advice I can leave with our graduates today, it is to be bold. Half measures and incrementalism aren't going to get us where we need to go. You have the skills, the knowledge, the degree, and the character to make a difference, to make the difference we need. Go for it, Policy Terps. Congratulations, class of 2021. Okay. Okay, now we will hear from our student speakers. And our first uh, speaker is Miguel Rosario as the graduate student speaker. Thank you. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank Dean Orr, um, the School of Public Policy and the University of Maryland faculty for the opportunity to speak amongst you tonight. As Dean Orr just mentioned, um, I know we're all looking forward to the opportunity to have this in person. But like in each and every one of you have done over the past two years in these trying times, we adapt and we overcome. I'd like to congratulate all of you here tonight on your accomplishments. You have persevered throughout not only COVID over the past two years, but also endless nights of studying, supporting your families, and balancing your work and personal life commitments. As we all know, however, the road does not end here. 
you all will set forth and accomplish great things from now and for years to come, whether it be in the public sector, the private sector, or continuing education. Do not forget the reasons that have driven you and motivated you that have led you here tonight. However, we still owe it to the greater public. We owe it to our families, friends, and strangers alike to do the right thing. The world is changing ever so rapidly and the policies of yesterday have to adapt and address the problems of tomorrow, but at the speed of relevance. It is our duty as we now have the opportunity to be at the forefront of change, whether it's addressing climate change, social reforms, or technology adoption, we now have the chance to make a difference. We have to shift from the bureaucratic mindsets of no because to yes if, and it starts with you. If there's anything that I've learned from my current career in the United States Air Force is that I strive to serve with integrity. I serve for you all, and I serve to, be, to do excellent in everything that I do. As policy graduates from this amazing establishment, I challenge each and every one of you to identify why you serve. Hold not only others accountable, but also yourselves. Dig deep and drive hard. Again, it starts with you. The world is small, and I hope to run into some of you someday in our professional careers. Again, you all do great things. I honestly believe that. This is the start to the next chapter of our lives and to push yourselves in whatever path you decide to take and the opportunities are endless. Remember, be kind, be bold, be mindful, and whatever you do, don't give up. Don't ever give up. Thank you for your time tonight, graduates. Happy holidays, and I'll see you on the other side. Our next speaker um, is Ms. Emma Kearney. Hi, everyone. Thank you to the School of Public Policy and everyone for the opportunity to speak tonight. As an 18-year-old high school student with high hopes for my college experience, I struggled, as I imagine everyone else on the Zoom call did as well, with deciding where I was going to spend the next chapter of my life. Spending a day touring our campus only gave me a small snapshot of what the next four years of my life here would really look like. When it came time to make my decision, I sat down to make a list with everything I wanted for my college experience. Football games, big classes, vibrant social life, and strong academics were just a few things I was looking for in a college. Like everyone else, I decided that the University of Maryland was the best fit for me. Maybe you decided right out of high school like I did, or maybe you took a few years off or transferred from another school. Whatever your path to the University of Maryland looked like, I doubt it went exactly as you planned. I knew that college was going to be challenging, adapting to living on your own, building study habits, finding friends, and paving the way for your future are not small feats. What I did not expect was for a global pandemic to hit in the middle of my sophomore year, just as I became acclimated with life as a college student. Being sent home to take my classes in my childhood bedroom, only 20 feet away from my dad's makeshift office in the dining room, I began to question what my future as a college student would look like under these conditions. Although tiptoeing through the kitchen during my dad's conference calls to make breakfast, never felt the same as my morning trips to the dining hall, I soon learned what my college experience was really about. While I've grown to love College Park, construction and all, and come to think of it as my home, I realized that my college experience was not defined by the borders of our campus. No matter where I was, the support system I established through my peers, friends, policy professors, advisors, and staff never faded. I learned that home is not always a place, but a feeling. Throughout the semesters of Zoom, I never lost my identity as a Maryland Terp. Everyone here, please give yourself a pat on the back. Not only did you make it to graduation, which is an accomplishment on its own, but you did it under trying and unforeseeable circumstances. The perseverance in all of us to graduate college in times like these is admirable, and I hope that you're proud of yourself. As you tell your college stories to your grandkids one day, they might sound a little different than you anticipated, but that's okay. The grit that you gained during these years of your life will follow you forever and so will your identity as a Maryland Terp. As we all part ways to go to different cities, graduate schools and careers, remember that home is not a place, but a feeling. Maryland pride will stay with all of us as we begin the next chapter of our lives. Congratulations, public policy winter graduates and good Terps. Okay, thank you, Emma. Let me go. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to do two things at one time. It's, it's dangerous. 
Okay. Okay. Hopefully um, you can see me. Our next speaker is our commencement speaker, Mark Conway. You can read in the program his illustrious bio, but I'm actually, as the director of the graduate admissions, proud to introduce him as a double terp. He, and most recently, a graduate of our MPP program. Um, so welcome to Mark Conway. Thank you, Taryn. Um, and, and thank you, Dean Orr. And congratulations to the graduating class of 2021. Um, it, it's truly an honor to be here with you today. Uh, I know each of you is probably a little bit disappointed that the commencement must be virtual. I can assure you I am too. Um, but look at the bright side. Uh, at least your family can't embarrass you. And you get the pleasure of attending your graduation in pajamas if you so choose. It's not all bad. <laughs> Um, it's crazy to think that just eight years ago, I was literally in your shoes. Like you, I was graduating from the School of Public Policy, ultimately equipped, but still honestly nervous about the future and what it held for me, as I'm sure you are too today. Um, what's more, political extremism, COVID, and economic woes have forced us to rethink our role as Americans, both domestically and internationally, because the playing field for policy is constantly changing. So today I wanna to share a few lessons that I've learned after my graduation that I think the graduating me would have appreciated eight years ago, and I hope you'll appreciate them too. Uh, so the first lesson I wanna share with you is that you deserve to be in the room. For, you, for those of you that don't know me, uh, which is pretty much everybody here, um, I'll let you in on a little secret. Uh, I'm really just a kid from the Bronx. Uh, I know I, I, I wear many hats technically, um, but really, I'm just a kid from the Bronx who decided to make an impact, no matter how unlikely that impact seemed at the outset. Um, the Bronx, New York, uh, the 15th district happens to be the poorest congressional district in the country. Nearly 40% of its residents live under poverty. Um, and I didn't know this fact growing up, but it became glaringly obviously um, when I moved to Maryland. Every now and again, I catch myself wondering how the heck did I get here? A 33-year-old kid from the Bronx, now serving on the Baltimore City Council, things have turned out, um, but things could have turned out very differently for me. Um, but somehow I'm here talking to you, a group of the brightest students in the country, endeavoring to tackle some of the biggest problems in the world. Uh, do I even deserve to be here? Am I enough? Am I too young? Am I not smart enough? Am I not witty enough? Am I not whatever enough? Uh, but the reality is we're all just kids from somewhere. We've, I've, I've learned over the years that almost everyone is just figuring it out. No one is doing anything of note um, and has all the answers. That discomfort, that imposter syndrome is an incredibly common feeling. But without question, I want you to leave here knowing that you deserve to be in the room. Your background, your experience, your perspective is precisely what is needed in the rooms where decisions are made. You are the future. And not only do you deserve to have a say in the future, it's critical that your voice be heard and your perspective shared, because one day you'll be in the driver's seat. The second lesson is to seize the moment, um, also known by its Latin trope, carpe diem. Um, at the University of Maryland, I had the opportunity to participate in a number of leadership programs that shaped my perspective on public service. The College Park, uh, College Park Scholars Public Leadership Program, um, beyond the classroom and the Rawlings Undergraduate Leadership Fellows Program, of which I'm sure some of you have, have gone through that program, just to name a few. At some point, I decided that I wanted to run for office and I didn't know how or when I would do it. Um, then in 2019, I learned that my councilman was not gonna run. And although I initially had no plans to run, I realized that this might be my best shot. I knew city government well, and I felt that I could immediately make a difference as a council member given my years working in the mayor's office. But there were a number of reasons why this was a difficult time to run. Um, my wife and I had just moved into our house and it needed tons of repairs. Money was tight. Uh, we were still getting to know the neighborhoods uh, and, and the neighbors. Uh, and to make it all just a little bit more fun, uh, my wife had just found out that she was pregnant with our second child. <laughs> um, you know, that said, I, I, I thought long and hard about the opportunity to run and ultimately 
decided to seize the moment. Life is short and there's no telling when or if that opportunity would present itself again. Ultimately, as you now know, it all worked out and I'm incredibly happy that we made that decision. But the crux, the crux of that decision hinged on the fact that if I had not run, I always would have wondered what if. Win or lose, I would have had no regrets, but thank God I won. Um, the third lesson is don't quit. Uh, there have been a number of times in my career um, when I seriously wondered if I was in over my head. Uh, one of the most memorable times uh, was when I was when I left the mayor's office to run a small nonprofit called the Baltimore Tree Trust. I was excited about the opportunity to leverage my environmental policy background and my familiarity with city government, uh, but, but unfortunately it didn't play out the way that I hoped. In the first two weeks, two of the founders who were working as staff at the organization quit. Then we lost our largest and then our second largest grants, uh, which accounted for nearly 70% of our budget. Um, and what's more, I, I didn't know how to run a nonprofit. Uh, I'd never raised money. I'd never written a grant. I never even planted a tree. And suddenly I was responsible for figuring all this stuff out. I can't lie to you. I, I immediately regretted taking the job, but I refused to fail precisely because everyone expected me to fail. I learned that um, after the fact, the board had already begun having discussions about whether or not they should cut the losses and dissolve the organization, but I didn't quit. I hustled double time to keep the lights on and the organization afloat. I cut back to the essentials and developed an, an ambitious strategic plan so that funders could begin to appreciate my vision for the organization and our plan to get it done. It was an incredibly tough first year, but I'm, I'm proud to say that we not only made it through, we excelled. In just three years, we doubled the size of the organization and in the process planted thousands of trees, transformed numerous neighborhoods while empowering residents with jobs all along the way. Baltimore Tree Trust is still thriving today and I'm incredibly proud of the work that I accomplished there during my leadership. The final lesson that I wanna share is always to remember your why. There've been countless times in my short career uh, where I've had to make tough decisions with imperfect information. Inevitably, you'll be faced, faced with decisions that are just flat out complicated. In these instances, there's nothing more important than having a North Star. You should peri periodically take time to ask yourself, what is the impact that you want to have and why? Uh, that, th that may seem like a very simple, simple question, but you'd be surprised how many people never think about it or haven't thought about it lately. As, as much as possible, you should try to align every job you take, every organization you work for, uh, and, and otherwise with your why. Identifying your why isn't always easy and sometimes your why even changes as it did for me when I became a father, but your why Will help you identify your values so that you will be able to na navigate difficult decisions. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you my why, it's, it's my little girls, now, now two and three years old. Um, I wanna make sure that the city, the country, and the world that they take on at their graduation in 20 years, it's just a little bit better than the world that I stepped into eight years ago today. So congratulations to the class of 2021. The future's yours, be bold. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Okay, now we are going to move into what if we were in person, everyone would be excitedly saying the reason we're all here, um, the conferral of the degrees. So you'll just hopefully some of you are together with your graduates and you can high five them in person and just know that we're all giving you a virtual high five. Um, to begin with the names of the degree candidates, our PhD program director, Robert Sprinkle, will read our PhD candidate names. Rob, you're on uh, mute. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm at my best when muted. Uh, Clifton Cottrell, advised by Professor Rosina Bierbaum and by me, whose dissertation was entitled Acknowledging Survival, Political Recognition and the Indigenous Climate and Indigenous Climate Adaptation in the United States. Christopher John Hickey, advised by Professor Nancy Gallagher. 
assessing motives for Russian Federation use and non-use of force, an approach to improve the strategic planning and policy of the United States. A dissertation that's I'm sure being reread at the moment. Next, Jing Liang, advised by Professor Lucy Chu, Energy Efficiency Improvement in Buildings, Essays on the Impacts, Adoption, and Benefits. Thank you. Thank you. And now uh, the degree candidates, the master's degree candidates um, read by Mike Goodhart. The candidates for Master of Public Policy, Corinne Shirley DeFrancisi, Nathan Ross Feldman, Catherine Ann Goldberg, Charles James Horton, Karen Kaba, Kevin Leveling, Brittany K. Lashley, Madeline Claire Miller, Jose Maria Mune Caceres, Elia Nasaj, Peter Toluwanimi Abulare, Karen Jalen Ramsey, Selena Raj Raleigh, Ruhia, Alisa Anahi Salgado, Serena Maria Saunders, Ian A. Sloan, Rick Marving Tamno, Parker Matthew Thomas. Those were the candidates for Master of Public Policy. Next, the candidates for the Master of Public Management. Hasna Ab Abu Iwahida, Rafik O. Anderson, Andrew Dale Bossler, Nicholas Carlton, Alberto Luis Colon Perez, Scott Lawrence Dyer. Brian Goodman, Christopher P. Johnson, Ellen Knight, Michael Lukens, Adrian Claire Messer, Stephen Daniel Moebis, Randall Monfaston, Balewa Nadiji. Nidayako, Christopher Jesse Drummond Pope, Victoria Reed, Miguel Angel Rosario III, Dara Michelle Shevska, Gwendolyn Todd. These are the candidates of the Master of Public Management degree. Now, the Master of Professional Studies, they're the candidates for the Master of Professional Studies Public Administration degree. Alex Joseph Iosa. Alex Carey. Joy Keiko Young Champaloo. Justin Joseph Falciano, Gianna Camille Howard, Song Hu, Sei 
Ong Jiang. Elizabeth Nicole Kringer. Wen Li Li. Xuan Liu. Isabel Martinez Ponte. Daryl Latrell Morcel. Shu Rui Yuan. These were the candidates for the Master of Professional Studies, Public Administration. Thank you. And next, the candidates for Bachelor of Arts will be read by Dr. Jennifer Littlefield. It is my honor and privilege to read the names of our candidates for the Bachelor of Arts in Public Policy. Olamide, Olasun Kanyami, Adewole, Atarve, Avad, Molly, Alyssa Bloom, Spencer, Lee Bloomberg, Justin, Keith, Bridget, Selena, Ashad, Chaudhry, Jenny, Chen, Caroline, Michaela, Davenport, William, Keller, Demetos, Michelle, Elizabeth, Gonickman, Emma, Julie, Hammer, Aaron, Michaela, Hammond, Emma, Jane, Kearney, Vivian Simone Kramer, Alexis Lee Lashbaugh, Joseph Patrick Lawson, Elizabeth Catherine Labello, Wesley Talbot Meadowcroft, Christopher Austin Messer, Jonathan Daniel Reynolds, Neil Michael Roden, Caitlin M. Thomason, Joyce Chinone Ogakwi, Joseph Daniel J.D. Holland Wilkes. Congratulations, we're extremely proud of all of you. These are the candidates for Bachelor of Arts in Public Policy. Congratulations, class of 2021. Um, we have some of our faculty here and the you should have been promoted to a panelist so that you could speak up. And if you, you're a faculty member and you wanna give a quick parting uh, congratulatory message, you can say something now. And once that's wrapped up, Dean Orr can, can close for us and then you guys can go celebrate on a Tuesday evening. Graduates. I'm just delighted to share this evening with you. And I just had uh, one thought. Uh, you know, I'm a great baseball fan. I always tell my management classes and leadership all about baseball as an analogy for life. And I always tell them, you can't make the majors and stay there if you don't learn to hit a curveball. And I always tell them, life is going to throw you a lot of curveballs along the way. Well, one thing I know is that you have learned a lot at the School of Public Policy, and you've learned to hit curveballs. The way you have responded to dealing with the impact of this pandemic has just been remarkable. And I know that learning is gonna hold you in good stead for all that life holds for your future. I'll always remember this class as one of the gutsiest classes I've ever had the privilege to be with. Congratulations, every single one of you, thanks. I'll just say quickly that Mark Conway was in my very first class that I ever taught at Maryland. And I remember him exactly where he saw it. And we keep in touch. So all of you, please keep in touch and stay in touch with all of us because we do remember you, we cherish you, and we're so proud of you because one day you'll come back and be amazing like Mark was today. And I got a little teary just listening to the kid from the Bronx um, who I, I made an impact on me even as a sophomore. And all of you have made an impact on me in all my classes as well. So thank you and please keep in touch. I wanted to say quickly, our, our students have such broad reach. Tonight on this call, we have Isabel from Spain. We have uh, Balewa studying Nigerian trade strategy. We have social entrepreneurs making an impact across the world and right here. I'm so proud of you and so proud to have been a small part of your lives. Uh, we look forward to the next step of your journey, which we know is gonna be great. Thank you. Dean Orr, do you wanna close us out? 
I would uh, love to, and I want to just thank uh, Taryn and all the members of our commencement committee for pulling this off. Uh, <laughs> none of us wanted to be doing it this way, but you did an amazing job. Thank you for that. It is a, a sign of the innovation that has been forced upon us in education and in higher education in the last two years, but you pulled it off beautifully. Thank you. And I want to thank all the faculty that have joined us here tonight, too. Uh, I have been the lucky recipient of many thanks to the school for your hard work. Um, thank you. And this morning, I had the pleasure of seeing Adrian and Joy and Shuan at school, taking some pictures outside with Testudo. And I told them, we want you back. So I want the same thing for all of you. Uh, when you come back, go see Jen, but then make sure you do come back and see the rest of us too. Um, you really are a part of the Terp uh, policy, uh, Terp family, and we couldn't be more proud. Go forth and conquer, you wonderful policy Terps. Congrats.